Hey there gamers, I am back. I have my new machine up and running. I had help from TigerCon getting the machine put together. I've got it hooked up on my rack. I've got two, two monitors in it now. So now I am down to one machine. I'm using Windows again as my main OS. but I'm wrangling it, making it obey. Um, I do miss using Ubuntu. It's, it just works, but oh well, whatever. I'm down to one, down to one machine, and I've got two displays on that one machine, and it's been working out fine. I've got my browsers installed. I've got um, different stuff that I use every day installed. I got my, I'm doing all my security precautions and stuff because I know I'm on an OS now that is a lot more vulnerable. I've been getting this machine up and ready to do more streaming and also, you know, do gaming and streaming. So I've got a ton of games installed uh, via Steam, Epic Store, and Origin, the games that I currently own. I've got three three terabyte drives in there for game storage and I've got them pooled together using StableFit Drive Pool which is sort of a competitor to Microsoft Spaces which is a piece of shit that's built into Windows. This is sort of a RAID software that does not change the formatting on the drive so that if something goes wrong with the drive um, you don't lose the entire array. You don't lose it. But um, I'm not using striping or anything, or it doesn't do, it does something similar to striping where it will copy your games and make a duplicate of them, or it can even duplicate specific folders instead of the entire drive itself. But I don't need to do any of that because this is just game storage. This is just for games. So I don't need to do any of that. And so if something happens to a drive, I just replace the drive and then I just redo the array and re-download the games. Uh, I've got a one terabyte SSD, Intel SSD, which was relatively inexpensive, uh, surprisingly. It was not that pricey. I was a bit shocked by that. So here's the final specs of the machine that I am currently using right now to record this video. It is a I've uh, got a Windows 10 Pro, fully activated version. Uh, I've got a Ry AMD Ryzen 5 3600, a Asus ROG Strix B450F Gaming motherboard. Very good motherboard. Yes, it's a B450, not an X570. I couldn't afford a much, you know, higher tier board for that CPU, but it supports third gen Ryzen. I have a AMD Radeon RX 5600 XT with 6 gigs of memory. And so far what I've thrown at that thing handles it perfectly fine. Final Fantasy 15, really high settings, even with um, Game, some of the game works features turned on, even though this is not an NVIDIA card, runs beautifully. I've done Batman Arkham Knight, again, with some of the game works features turned on, runs great. Final Fantasy XIV, get well in excess of 200 FPS with, at max settings. That game is not that difficult to run on computer systems, even though it does use GameWorks. And, uh, I just recently got uh, Elder Scrolls Online going. I installed a mini-map and some other add-ons, and I'm still getting, you know, a max of 60 FPS. Which I think that's... I think it's capped at 60 FPS on PC, if I recall. It doesn't go up higher than that. So... Yeah, uh, this machine performs really well. The only thing I have not tested yet is VR. 
Uh, so I'll be doing that um, the next several days so that um, next week um, everything goes well, which I think it will, if everything goes well, then uh, I will resume the an otaku turtle turtles. An otaku tours Japan in VR. I'll be resuming that series. Uh, I need to get a video editor. Uh, I do use uh, Adobe Premiere in there for some heavy editing. I'd like to have a local editor here on this machine also, so I'll probably be uh, grabbing, um, you know, hit film again. That's a pretty decent editor, and it should run a lot better now on this machine. Uh, though I, I picked the I picked the 3600, the Ryzen 5 3600, because it is the budget cake right now. It, it beats everything that's out from Intel right now. It may not have as good a single-threaded performance as an Intel chip, but it's multi-threaded. just kicks the butt out of anything that Intel has within the price range. So I was able to get this machine thanks to President Trump because of the carriage package. Now, I didn't need it for bills, but I needed a new computer. And the old computer was an Intel 4790 with a Radeon RX 570 4 gig. And I needed a serious upgrade because a lot of games weren't going to support that CPU anymore. And a lot of games, especially VR titles, were going to need more video memory especially Half-Life Alex. Half-Life Alex wants at least uh, six gigs of video memory, and that's what I've got now. And I've got a, you know, a CPU. I, I picked the specs for this machine specifically for Half-Life Alex, because it's the, that is the most graph, most um, hardware taxing game that's currently out right now, is that game. And it's a VR title. So, uh, VR is about to really explode in the coming years. Uh, it, it's VR is coming out of its infancy. There's a lot of new headsets coming. There has been this new headset initiative uh, coming from uh, various various companies. There's a new headset that is sort of a collaboration between Steam and Microsoft, well, well, well Valve and Microsoft, which utilizes both um, Steam VR's tracking technology and Windows Mixed Reality technology at the same time, and HP is building it. So VR is seriously taking off. It's it's seeing a renaissance, as, you, as it were, right? or it's about to see a renaissance. So you're going to see a lot of VR stuff, and I'm going to be covering VR games, VR apps, um, a lot of stuff like that in the coming months and, and years in this channel with this new machine. Uh, so in a week or so, I'll start releasing the... Um, the new series where I explored Japan and explained some of its history and sort of demystify some of the some of the misinformation and, and myths that people have about Japan because of anime. You know, I'm a big anime fan and there's a lot of people who just don't understand you know what anime is what 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 Japan is like in real life. So, I can explain it. I'm not an expert. I'm no expert, but I know what I know. And I'll share what I know. And what I don't know, I know how to research. Anyway, so that's the state of things. Got machine up and running. Uh, oh, we're gonna be getting studio lights soon in there, so I'll be able to start using the green screen again. Also, I'm going to be um, using, uh, not using it now, so I don't have the current resource money to get it right now, but I'll be using uh, XSplit, a VCAM, 
in here. I'm gonna need some better, I'm gonna need to uh, do something about the lighting issue in here because it has this weird effect anomaly around me when I've got it on. It's supposed to replace, it's supposed to use AI to uh, replace your background with something else without a green screen. So it, it, it works, sort of works. There's like weird artifacts all around me and stuff. Uh, so I have to figure out why it's doing that. It might have something to do with this webcam. This is not the best Logitech webcam. And speaking of Logitech, I warned them. I warned Logitech that if they don't support this in their new G Hub software, this is the this is the G13 gamepad. This right now is still currently the best gaming um, keypad out there. It's fully programmable. It, you can set up macros, you can have multiple profiles, there's even apps. Some games even use have apps built in for this. Like Borderlands has one that displays in this LCD screen, LCD screen or Borderlands 2 has one that displays on here. Uh, it, it's, it, it's very good. We used this for Elite Dangerous for a long time to be able to control ship functions and stuff and it was good for FPS games. And, and things, and um, we were going to use it for Star Citizen, but they haven't updated their old software for managing this thing, for programming it, and so newer games are taking advantage of security features within um, Windows 10 that blocks that software from recognizing if that game is even running. And it needs to know that in order for this to work because it identifies the game that's running and switches profiles so that this functions. That software stopped working. So you need to use their G-Hub, which does work within um, Microsoft's new security paradigm for newer games. Destiny 2 is one of those games. I wanted to use this with Destiny 2. Now I, I can't. So I warned Logitech on their Twitter that if they don't support this, I'm dumping them. Well, I've done it. Except for this heavy equipment panel that I have here. This, um, this, it's technically a SATEC panel. It's meant for farming simulator, but people have used it for Star Citizen. It's not one of, it's not a programmable panel like this. It's not a programmable panel like this. It is technically a joystick. The buttons are joystick buttons. I have dumped Logitech. The only thing I have a Logitech left is this webcam. They're the only ones that really make decent webcams. But my mouse is no longer the G600. I now am using a Red Dragon. And so far, I, I like it. Now, it doesn't do automatic profile switching for games. I have to switch it manually. But I get better control and the software works better the G-Hub is just a piece of shit. Have you ever used that thing? It's awful. It's laggy. It, it, it's basically gamerized. You know, how, how they gamerize things because it's made for gamers. And they make it fancy and everything and it's just a piece of shit it just does not work the way you expect it to work and it's designed by committee it's awful it's absolutely terrible so i'm not using it i don't need it i don't have that thing on here i don't even have the other logitech software i don't need it for this panel 
for this uh, heavy equipment panel. I don't need it over here. It just works as a joystick. I have Tigra's joystick gremlin profile uh, set up on here and we've played Star Citizen with this and it controls great. It's got uh, stuff so that we can, you know, when we change modes, it switches modes and then our control schemes are different per mode. For like, we've got a mode for landing, we've got a mode for when we're in regular flight, we've got a mode for when we're in combat, and it alters the controls because a uh, Star Citizen doesn't have uh, controls um, mode switching like Elite Dangerous does. And speaking of Elite Dangerous, um, they released a trailer for their um, new Odyssey expansion, a new paid expansion. And I guess they released it a little early. They weren't really intending to release it when they did. And uh, I'm not going to hold my breath. For one thing, these developers have been, have been neglecting the game for a long time. They've neglected the game for a long time. When they do release updates, it is very lackluster, very low effort, except for the artwork. The artwork's great, especially the fleet characters. It, 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 they look off. They look awesome. You know, the artwork is great in that game, but the implementation of gameplay and features is just absolutely piss poor. When the fleet characters were first released, they were shit. They're still shit, even after they've been modified. I mean, what their intended use and purpose is just shit. They're utterly, they're utterly worthless for what they were originally intended for. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's as an elite dangerous player, we are very jaded because of how we're treated by the developers. In contrast, oh, CIG has been, you know, CIG has been doing wonderful. Yes, Star Citizen has a lot of bugs. There's been some um, server crashes and stuff recently, a lot of server crashes and stuff, but they've been, they've been doing some good stuff lately. Now they've got another update coming, uh, 3.10, and they say that they're going to be working on the server issue, and they're going to be implementing a lot of really good, interesting stuff. So I'll be doing some videos and streaming of that to uh, to uh, show it off, and I'll be using Tigra's control scheme with uh, the panels and everything. Anyway. I want to thank you for watching, and uh, I will be doing a lot more content with this new machine in the coming weeks. Hey, if you want to reach me, uh, you can uh, get to me via these social media networks. You can also find me on Mewe, that's also where Gamers Bay is. We are affiliated with the Gamers Bay channel, and so uh, you can find me on Steam, find me on Discord, and on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. Don't ask me to go to Facebook. I'm not going there. Not ever. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.